Two of the most famous jet fighters from World War II, the P-80A, later known as the F-80A, and the Me-262A1A, oftentimes draw comparisons to each other insofar as to which plane is better. Though they are wildly different designs, they perform fairly similarly, and as such, warrant comparison. This said, I will compare everything about these planes, including their specifications, capabilities, and will give real-life comparisons based on data from World War II and the immediate aftermath. Being that this is going to be done using War Thunder for footage, for the most part, I will use that as a portion of my comparison going over how the two planes compare in-game, but will also mix in real-life information and actual evaluations so that we can have a complete picture of how both of these planes would fare against each other, both in War Thunder and in real life. Thankfully, War Thunder does a great job of taking real-life specifications, blueprints, and flight models and making excellent digital representations of them. So this video is intended to serve as both a point of comparison between the two planes in War Thunder and, again, in real life, if they ever had fought against each other in World War II. All sources used that aren't from War Thunder will be linked in the description below, so be sure to check those out. That said, if you like this type of content, let me know in the comments, and also like and subscribe, as all of that means a ton to me and will help you to see my future content. Either way, let's get into it. So to start, let's go over their stats and specifications, and in War Thunder, the ME-262A1A has a stat card top speed of 865 kilometers per hour, but in real life, it was actually closer to 900 kilometers per hour, or around 560 miles per hour. In War Thunder, the P-80A5 has a stat card top speed of 882 kilometers per hour, but in real life, Per my sources, it appears to be closer to around 861 kilometers per hour or around 535 miles per hour without modifications and in the A5 variant. Now further going off the stat card, the 262 has a rate of climb of 20 meters per second in War Thunder, which is about the same in real life, with the P-80A5 having a 23.6 meter per second rate of climb, which again is in War Thunder and seems to be a real life stat per my sources. Now for turn time, it's around 23 seconds for the P-80, owing largely to its slightly smaller size and decently lighter weight, whereas the ME-262 has around a 28 second turn time. In real life, their turn times are likely similar to what we see in War Thunder. For the ME-262, a World War II aircraft enthusiast forum user by the name of Claymore calculated that the 262 would have a turning radius of around 4,980 feet at 450 miles per hour, which would take, again in real life, around 46 seconds. Not sure how accurate that is, but it it is a little bit different than what we see in War Thunder. On the other hand, the P-80, due to its lower weight, would have likely had a turning radius several hundred feet to nearly 1,000 feet smaller, though exact data is difficult to pinpoint. Post-war tests confirm the agility advantage of the P-80, however. As mentioned before, there is a substantial weight difference between the two planes with the P-80 weighing in at 11,700 pounds, or around 5,300 kilograms gross weight, with around 3,850 pounds of thrust, or around 1,750 50 kilograms of force coming from its J33 A9 jet engine. Now the ME-262 does weigh a bit more at around 14,472 pounds or around 6,500 kilograms, about a 1,200 kilogram distance per the US Navy's history website with two Junkers Jumo 004B engines, each having around 1,980 pounds of thrust or around 900 kilograms of force. Outside of pure performance, the most important thing about any jet fighter would be its armament. So the P-80 has a total of 3.25 kilograms per second of burst mass from its 650 cals, with each of its 50 cals having a 750 round per minute rate of fire from, again, each gun. The ME-262 has a 13.2 kilogram per second burst mass from its four MK-108 cannons, with these cannons having 600 rounds per minute as their rate of fire. The ME-262 has almost 10 kilograms per second more of burst mass, and despite the substantially higher rate of fire from the P-80, along with its massively larger amount of ammunition, the ME-262 can fire about 132 kilograms of shells before emptying its ammo completely, compared to around 78 kilograms of non-explosive 50 cal rounds from the P-80. These rounds, however, can still be incendiary despite being non-explosive. This is due to the P-80 having a total fire time without jams of around 24 seconds, or 
whereas the ME262 comes in at around 10 seconds of total fire time. Now for shell velocity, also extremely important, it comes in at about 2,900 feet per second for the P80s 50 cals and around 1,800 feet per second for the ME262's MK108 30 millimeter cannons. The MK108s have only around two thirds of the muzzle velocity of the 50 cals, leading to them being less accurate and tougher to aim, especially at a distance and against small and fast targets. The armament differences between the P80A5 and 262 are largely due to the needs of the war at the time in which they were both built. Ultimately, the 262 is much better at destroying large targets, such as heavy bombers, than nearly all planes in the entirety of War Thunder, as a single HE filled shell could destroy a wing or even a B-17 or B-24 with numerous hits leading to surefire obliteration. Interestingly, the ME-262 had a field kit being devised for it in order for it to mount the guided Rurstahl X-4 air-to-air -air missiles that were nearing deployment. The P-80, on the other hand, has 650 cals that are and were great for attacking smaller targets, like fighters and strafing ground targets as well. Its higher rate of fire, larger ammo capacity, and higher muzzle velocity made it great for destroying light targets, as proven by many American fighters of the day that sported M-2s as their primary armaments, from the P-51 to the P-47 and more. Now for secondary armaments, these two planes are again fairly similar, but a bit different. The ME-262 can carry its R-4M air-to-air rockets that can also be used with limited success against unarmored ground targets, whereas the A-1A Yabo can carry a single 500 kilogram bomb, two 250 kilogram bombs, or two Werfer Granate 21 rockets. Interestingly, the Yabo was simply the A-1A with an R-6 field modification kit on it that allowed for it to be able to use anti-ground ordnance. The P-80A5, on the other hand, carried the typical American suite of two 1,000-pound bombs or up to eight HVAR rockets. If you're including the Yabo, both the 262 and P-80 are fairly close in terms of capability for close air support, though the P-80 wins out due to the larger bomb load, though the 262 alone has purpose-built air-to-air rockets. And now time for the all-important rate of climb and dive rate tests. Now to achieve some level of parity, I did all tests of climbing and diving rates with 20 minutes of fuel and in realistic settings. I also wanted to keep the speed as close as possible between the two planes, meaning that I try to keep them at between 440 and 450 kilometers per hour the entire time whilst climbing. I did this to ensure that both planes were angled properly so that their speed was at some level of equilibrium, meaning that the plane with the higher rate of climb should be able to be at a slightly higher pitch angle, thus gaining altitude more quickly while keeping its speed nearly constant. For my rate of climb test, I had both planes start at an altitude of 150 meters and at a speed of 450 kilometers per hour, with the goal of reaching 5,000 meters, again while maintaining a speed between 440 and 450 kilometers per hour. The ME-262 reached 5,000 meters while moving at a speed of 441 kilometers per hour when it reached that altitude. I lifted off at 193 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 69 meters and started to make my ascent again at 450 kilometers per hour and 150 meters. It took a total of 4 minutes 10 seconds to reach 5,000 meters, giving us a rate of climb of around 20 meters per second, which is exactly what War Thunder said it would be and is accurate to real-world specifications. The P-80 lifted off while moving at 185 kilometers per hour, likely due to its lighter weight. Again, I started to climb at a speed of 450 kilometers per hour and at an altitude of 150 meters. It only took 3 minutes 48 seconds to reach 5,000 meters at a speed of 443 kilometers per hour once I reached the top, giving the P-80A5 a rate of climb of around 21.93 meters per second, which is just shy of War Thunder stat card, but is still fairly accurate to real life and similar enough to the ME-262. This is actually fairly similar to real-life post-World War II comparisons between the P-80 and ME-262 when the Americans were able to actually capture ME-262s as part of Operation Lusty. Now for some additional figures, by the time I reached my 5,000 meter goal, I was around 35 kilometers away from my start point with the ME-262, meaning that for every one meter of altitude that I gained, I moved forward around seven meters. Now for the P-80, by the time I reached 5,000 meters, I was around 29 kilometers away from the start, meaning that for every one meter of altitude 
altitude I gained, I moved forward just shy of six meters. And now for the all important dive test, and I promise this is actually quite interesting. Now the rate of dive was from 5,000 meters while I was moving at 500 kilometers per hour at the start of the dive, all the way down to a height of 1,500 meters where I started to pull out of the dive around 2,000 meters. Now with the ME262 from a height of 5,000 meters while moving horizontally again at 500 kilometers per hour, it took me approximately 17.66 seconds to dive to 1,500 meters, at which point I was moving at 1,026 kilometers per hour as I was pulling out of the dive. This means that my rate of dive during this run was around 198.19 meters per second. For that same run with the P80, again starting at 5,000 meters and moving at 500 kilometers per hour all the way down to 1,500 meters, it took 17.75 seconds to dive, reaching a 1,004 kilometer per hour top speed as I was pulling up. Using my same formula, my rate of dive with the P80 was around 197.2 meters per second. It is important to note though that the ME262 has several advantages at high speed, largely deriving it from its swept wings, which allows it to have a higher critical Mach number than the P80, allowing it to be controlled more easily again at high speeds. It also means that the 262 can hit higher speeds, so if the dive test was from a higher altitude, the 262 would top out at a higher top speed, giving it a larger dive rate differential between it and the P80A5. The 262 also has a higher speed limit for wing ripping. In real world testing in the immediate aftermath of World War II, the US again flew the 262 versus the P80A and found very similar findings to what I found with the aid of War Thunder in that the ME262 has better speed, acceleration, and arguably a better rate of climb though it's a little bit shaky with a higher critical Mach number. This is largely due to its swept wing compared to the straight wing P80. You can find, again, all of my sources for my real-world information down below in the description. Again, if there's any point of anonymity or vagueness between these two planes, which one has the better performance, it's in that rate of climb. Some people say the 262 is a little bit better. Some people say the P80. Of course, War Thunder has the P80 as having the rate of climb that's a little bit better, but really, it's still a marginal difference and something that is really a little bit ambiguous. And there are some other points of comparison as well, including durability and armor. Now for protection, the ME262 has a 90 millimeter bulletproof glass panel protecting the pilot, along with several 15 and 16 millimeter plates protecting internal components and the pilot. These plates are steel. Its fuel tanks are also self-sealing. The P80 has less armor with 38 millimeters of bulletproof glass to protect its pilot and one plate of 12.7 millimeters of steel with another steel plate of 10 millimeters. It also has self-fueling fuel tanks. Tanks. Now the 262 is decently durable, partially due to the armor, but also because of its two engine setup. If one engine dies and does not catch fire, a decently intact second engine can bring you back to base if you're close enough, whereas sufficient damage to the P80 single engine will make it impossible to return to base. So with all of that out of the way, let's see which plane is better in individual categories and which is better overall. I will give my assessment for both planes for how they are in War Thunder and how they were when they flew in real life. Now for overall specifications deriving from flight performance, overall, both planes are very similar and where one has an advantage, it is typically very slight, while the other plane will have an equally slight advantage in a different category in its own favor. For speed, the 262 wins by a hair, as well as for general acceleration and dive rate. Though on the other hand, the P80A5 wins with rate of climb and agility. Although the rate of climb advantage is fairly small, at least in more thunder and a little bit again ambiguous in real life and its agility is better typically at low to medium speeds while the 262 largely due to its swept wings has some of the best high speed maneuverability of any plane of that era jet or otherwise overall it is a tie in terms of general performance though there are minor speed and agility differences between the two ultimately this one comes down to user's preference. Now for armament, while the 262 has a hugely more powerful armament shot for shot, it can only fire for a fraction of the time that the P80 can fire and with a fraction of the accuracy, although with a force many times more powerful than a 50 cal. 
This comes down to what you're fighting. If you're fighting any multi-engine planes, the 262 is by far the better plane to use, as it is more likely to hit larger aircraft than it is to hit small aircraft. Against smaller planes, though the P-80 arguably has an advantage in terms of accuracy and duration of fire, this largely comes down to user preference, as the MK-108s are devastating if they land a hit against a small target. Not only this, but it has nearly two times the weight in ammunition, despite only having about one-fifth of the rounds. Overall, for performance against planes, I'd say the 262 wins largely on the premise that it has an arguably higher potential with a skilled pilot than the P-80 does. And also, the M-2s using the P-80 were already on their way out, making way for the M-3s, which would be a more apt comparison, and I'd say a little bit more equal in this case, if that again had the M-3s that the C-Series has. Now, for secondary armament, regardless of if you choose the A-1A or the Yabo, the P-80 wins by a somewhat small but still noticeable margin. Its two 1,000 pound bombs grant it far more capabilities versus ground targets than a single 500 kilogram bomb, as well as its smaller, yet still effective, HVAR rockets. The 50 cals also have decent armor penetration capabilities, allowing it to fire through slightly armored vehicles while the 262 mostly has to rely on HE filler and the luck of finding either unarmored or open top vehicles to attack. The only secondary armament in which the 262 has an advantage over the P-80 is with the R-4M rockets, and those are quite iffy and not really all too effective unless you're really lucky or shooting at large targets, which they were ultimately intended to be used against. For survivability, I'd say the 262 wins by a decent margin, largely due to the armor plates, sturdiness of its design, and its redundant engine layout, being that again it features two engines. The one undamaged Jumo 004 engine is hardly enough to take the ME-262 back to base, a plane with a single weak undamaged engine is better than a plane with no working engine. The largest issue, however, is that the Junkers Jumo 004 engines on the ME-262 are incredibly exposed and prone to fire, which could easily turn this advantage into a liability. Either way, barring that from happening, the 262 is overall more survivable. Now, for dogfighting, the P-80 wins due to its maneuverability. The laser accuracy and high fire rate of the 50 cals makes it so that you can target weak spots on enemy planes with ease. It also has sufficiently better turn rate compared to the 262. Everything else being equal, the P-80 would likely take the 262 in a fight of around 6 times out of 10. This largely comes down to pilot skill, but maneuverability does matter, and barring a high-speed turning fight, the ME-262 is just a slower turner, and the P-80 is just a little bit better. Now for intercepting, of course the 262 wins, as the art of intercepting is basically what it was built for, or at least what it was turned into as World War II went on. And now finally, Overall, who wins? In my opinion, and this is for both the real world and for War Thunder, I would say the 262 wins against the P-80A5, only the P-80A5, because the C-Series, for example, is a bit better than the 262, and only by the slightest of margins, and if not considering its late war engine reliability issues. Now, it totally depends on the scenario in question as well. If you want a bomber hunter, the 262 will win. Against other fighters, though, depending on the tactics of the 262 pilot, it should come out out on top, but if faced with an equally skilled P-80 pilot in equal conditions, the traits of the P-80 would lend it to be able to be more competent in a dogfight against the 262 than the 262 could be to the P-80. In a close air support and ground strike role, again the P-80 wins, but it's not a shutout. Survivability also matters, with the 262 taking that home, along with some very small speed advantages, though overall performance between these two planes is nearly equal. Ultimately, both planes were designed with different goals in mind, with the 262 ultimately being better suited for anti-bomber missions, with the P-80 being a more traditional fighter and later a strike fighter. Though we never saw what combat between these two jets would have looked like in World War II, though we were somewhat close, with two P-80s actually being stationed in Italy during World War II and conducting air combat patrols there, post-war trials so that the ME-262, despite having its design origins in the 1930s, years before the P-80 was designed, Designed, was every bit as good as the P-80, and arguably better, depending on who you ask. Ultimately, this one is one of the great what-ifs in aviation history, and I strongly encourage you to search this topic online, as there are many interesting posts that cover it extensively. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Seriously, it means the world to me. Let me know what you guys think about this type of video in the comments below, as I feel that these videos are more important to make than most other gaming-related content, as this is also 
also very much a real world comparison between two pioneering planes. And this actually took me around two times as long, at least so far as runtime is concerned, because I really wanted to make this as accurate and also as extensive of a comparison as possible, at least in a video format. Either way, subscribe if you'd like, but as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the other side. Take care, everyone.